Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is our countdown to two-a-day series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we're going to be answering about that team on our Saturday, August 14th preseason preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, the topic of conversation is the Winter's Blizzards. Yeah, and this was a Winter's team that did make the playoffs last year, only went four and seven, but uh, went three and two in district uh, in two to get the third playoff spot out of district four. Uh, they have 13 of 20 lettermen back from that team, including six offensive and seven defensive starters, but they will have some holes to fill at the same time. Uh, you lose a kid like Alex Salas, who's kind of that do it all athlete. Uh, you're going to have to kind of figure out how to replace that. But uh, a couple of good kids come back as well. John Cullen Busher, a quarterback with a little bit of experience. Uh, and some others that have, uh, Davin Oates and some others who've done some things uh, should be a, a fun season, another competitive one for winters. Yeah, well, they've got a little bit of size up there. They've got uh, three or four guys that uh, go 225 or bigger, which helps in that offense. Uh, they've also got, uh, you don't necessarily have to be huge to run the flex bone, but it, it doesn't hurt. Um, they also have uh, a sophomore quarterback that they're pretty high on, uh, Chris Martinez. So they have depth at that position. They have some quickness at that position. So, I'm kind of optimistic for winners to uh, to keep that momentum going. What we've seen uh, over the last few years from Coach Matt McCarty's group, and that's something I think we've come to expect from a Matt McCarty coach football team. They're going to be uh, a tough-minded, hard-nosed team. Going to be very competitive. They're going to defend, uh, and they're going to kind of uh, you know work their, for their offense that they get. And, and like I said, at the end of the day, they're going to be uh, in games late, which is. Uh, I mean, when you when you're a flex bone team, that's what you want to be. You want to have an opportunity to win, and they've they've been in that situation a lot in recent years. All right, let's take a quick look at the winter schedule. I think it's uh, it's got a nice mix of, uh, of of challenges and winnable games. Uh, it's mostly tough challenges, but uh, I'll tell you what, that's it's that's something that Coach McCarty wanted. This is his schedule that he designed. Uh, he's a guy. He's one of those guys that expects to make a run in the playoffs. And, you know, I'll tell you what, when you lead off with Cisco and San Saba in district play, you had better have been facing some tough teams in non-district. You're just not going to be ready. So I like this schedule for winners regardless of outcome. Yeah, and Coach McCarty's one of those guys, he's not terribly concerned with style points or with kind of the beauty of their overall record. So I think he's more concerned with making sure his team is prepared. And this is a non-district schedule that'll do it. You got Anson, El Dorado, Bangs, Holly, Heiko. I mean, that, that's a tough bunch of games to lead yourself into district, but – uh uh, we'll just kind of see how they can do. I think I think they'll be competitive in, in several of those games. Uh, how many they win, I don't think is as important as kind of just the state of this program entering district play. Those are three tough road games on that non-district portion of that schedule. At Anson, at Bangs, and at Holly. That's that's some tough go. That's a tough go right there. Uh, it's, I'll tell you what, if you, if you get out of there uh, at least competitive, I think you're ready for district. Definitely. And, and like you said, they they open district with two toughies with Cisco and San Saba right off the bat. Then you have an opportunity to get a couple of wins. I think really important games against Goldthwaite and DeLeon. And then you close out district against Coleman. So uh, this district schedule is not real easy either. You got the toughies right off the bat. You've got kind of almost must win games there after those two. And then a the game against Coleman, which could be interesting for seeding. All right. What is your game of the year for winners? Let's see if you agree with me. Uh, I, I think it's that uh, Goldthwait game there in, in, in the third week of district play. Because if you lose that one, you're 0-3, and then you have to beat both DeLeon and Coleman to have a shot. So the, that, to me, is the game of the year. Absolutely. I think that uh, I think you're right on that. I agree with you. That Goldthwait game on October 22nd at home is a game that winners absolutely must win or their back is against the wall. And that's not to say that that San Saba game is completely unwinnable. I, I think that there, that's, there's potential there for an upset. But the problem is if, if you don't win that Goldthwait game, you would either have had better upset San Saba or you're going to have to beat Coleman in the final week of the season. And both of those, I think, are going to be tough games where you're going to be the underdog going in. Well, if, if winners uh, wins one of its first two district games, then again, we're not saying they can't. But if winners wins one of those two games between Cisco and San Saba and then turns around and gets beat at home, against Goldthwaite, it really, I mean, it all, it's almost, it has the effect of erasing that, that important victory in the first two. It's still, we win or lose, if they're 0-2 or 1-1, and it's, it's a very important ball game. I think it's the most important ball game of the year for them on their slate. Yeah, and I think it, it could be a big one uh, just for momentum as well, because with that non-district schedule they're playing, uh, wins are going to be tough to come by 
and I don't think you want to get uh, too too big of a losing streak going as you get into district if that if it does come that way. So uh, I agree with you. That's a big game regardless of what happens in front of it. And uh, either way, I think if Winters to me their playoff hopes go through that Goldthwait game for sure. And that's just about going to wrap it up for this episode of the Countdown to Two a Day series, the Winners Blizzard. We want to remind you that we're going to be answering all the key questions about the Blizzards on our Saturday, August 14th preseason preview here at BigCountryPress.com, along with every other team in the Big Country. Don't miss it. Sign up. Subscribe. It's going to be the most thorough, most accurate preseason preview of Big Country football available by any media source. Nobody's going to beat us. In the meantime, thank you for checking out this episode of our Countdown to Two Day series. And make sure you tune in again tomorrow when we will be highlighting the Ballinger Bearcats here at BigCountryPreps.com.